people get the feedback without the support, without that clear indication of, I am here for you. I am on your side. I am on your team. It brings you farther away from your confidence, farther away from your authenticity, because all you're aware of is what's quote unquote wrong with how you're speaking, rather than being given the opportunity to explore what's right about how you already speak, where there is so much goodness and so much richness. Welcome to The Art of Speaking Up, a podcast that helps professional women access the limitless potential that lies within them. I'm your host, Jessica Guzik, and my mission is to help you find that spark inside you that has the power to transform your career in ways you may not have thought possible. I'm so excited that you're here, and now, on to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Jess. I'm the host of this podcast. I used to be in the corporate space. I spent many years there, and I am now a full-time coach for women in the 9 to 5 space. And if you're new here on this show, I talk all about the challenges and issues that women face in the workplace, and I interview other women to get their perspectives on these issues and Today's episode is on a topic. It's probably one of my favorite topics, to be honest with you, because I love communication. I love guiding you to feel powerful in how you communicate. I love helping you work through and solve the challenging puzzle of how to go from feeling very small and like shrinking when you communicate to feeling stable and strong and powerful when you're using your voice. I love that so much because it feels so good when you get to the point where you're like, whoa, not only do I not hate this, not only do I not feel small, but this is fun. I feel strong. I'm enjoying this. I'm developing my own unique style. When you get there, it is so much fun. And I promise you, it is worth going through the struggle of those times when you feel small and awkward. And I laugh because every time I reference that, I think of myself and I think of how small I would feel like in certain rooms and in certain situations. And I remember when I felt that way, it was very hard for me to imagine anything different. And even though I couldn't imagine it, and even though in my mind it felt like, well, this is just how it's going to be forever, that wasn't true. That turned out not to be true. I did get to a point where I built comfort in myself and confidence in myself and my work and my voice and my contributions. And so if you're thinking that you might be stuck the way you are, I want to remind you that you actually don't know if that's true. You don't have evidence of what's going to happen in the future. And what's going to happen in the future, the thing that determines it most is you and how much you're willing to bet on yourself and believe that that bold leader is in you. It's already there. And if you're willing to try and make the effort and be brave and sometimes even fail, that leader is going to begin to emerge. And today's episode is probably like one of the most important topics that I think exists when it comes to having a powerful presence, when it comes to having executive presence, when it comes to projecting authority in the room. And that is the topic of authenticity. And I think this topic is misunderstood. I think it's not discussed or emphasized nearly enough relative to how critical and important authenticity is to get you to a place where you can project authority and feel strong and confident in a way that is sustainable, that feels like you, that doesn't drain you, that feels good. And so today's episode is all about authenticity. Now, you may have noticed recently that I have been doing a lot of content on executive presence and your voice, and that's partly because In the background, I have been filming and creating a video course on executive presence to help you with the foundational skills of executive presence. And that course is done and it's here. And I am so excited because I had a great time making it. And I think it is some of my best work yet. And I created this course so that you could begin to learn and study and absorb some of the foundational skills that you need 
to project authority in a room. Now, of course, there's the intangible factor of confidence and feeling strong, and that is super, super important. But there are other pieces of the puzzle, and I wanted to walk you through some of the really important foundational things that you need to do in a room in order to project authority, in order to project credibility, so that when you go into the room, you know what to do. You have a clear roadmap. You have a clear vision for how you want to be speaking, how you want to be communicating, and how you show up in a room and your executive presence is one of the most important things for your career, particularly as you rise up. The more you rise up and the more authority and influence you have, the more important your presence in a room becomes because that's where you have more of your impact. And so this course is going to help you have a presence in rooms that makes people see you as the leader, see you as the authority. And this course is totally, totally free. And you can get it now in the show notes by clicking the link or going to jessgazitcoaching.com slash free resources. It is a three-day video course, and when you sign up, you will get day one sent to you right away. So you'll be able to watch that ASAP. And as you watch all of the modules of the course, you are going to learn what I consider the foundational building blocks for strong executive presence, which I call the three Cs. And you will find out what the three Cs stand for when you take the course. But some of the things that you'll learn is you'll learn what emotion is the most important emotion to project in order to create authority. You will learn some of the mistakes that many people make when they're trying to exude executive presence and what you should do instead. You're going to learn how to communicate in a way that immediately makes you the leader and makes you the authority in a room. And none of this requires being fake. It doesn't require being loud. It doesn't require you speaking in a way that feels weird. It just requires you to get more and more comfortable at being yourself and to tweak the way that you share information in these small ways. And these small ways can add up to really big impact in terms of how you are perceived in a room. So I'm so excited for you to take this course. I literally had a ball creating it. I went like, I went big and nuts into some interesting <laughs> interesting ways of teaching things because I wanted it to be fun because I feel like There's so much like professional development and corporate content out there that is very dry and boring. And I really, you know, one of my core values in this work that I do, I have several, but like one of the pillars of the work that I do and like one of the pillars of my life is fun. I think that things should be fun. I think our professional life should be fun. I think learning should be fun. And so I have really infused fun into this course. And so I'm so excited for you to take it. And if you want to get access to it, go into the show notes. You'll see all of the information. You'll see the link and you'll see where you can find it on my website. And I'd love to hear what you think. And today, I'm talking a little bit more about this topic, and I'm talking about the authenticity piece, which is such a huge ingredient. And like I was saying before, it really shocks me that this isn't being talked about more and that we're not talking about authenticity and that this doesn't come up in feedback conversations and conversations like in corporate spaces when, you know, when people are being guided to have a stronger presence in a room. So many of like, you know, the things that are talked about and the advice that people get to me is not hitting on the right things. And if you were to ask me what is one like what is the one most important thing to focus on for me to feel strong and confident in my voice, I would probably say that the most important thing for you to focus on is authenticity because it is what everything else is built upon. It is literally the foundation of everything. So when you don't have authenticity, you're building things on a shaky foundation. And when you build things on a shaky foundation, they tend to break. And I wanted to really explain to you how authenticity operates when it comes to your voice and when it comes to projecting power and confidence in a room, because this is really important. And the way that I want to explain this to you is by thinking about gravity, because I actually think of authenticity as being like gravity. And so here's what I want you to think about. Here's how I understand this in my mind, and this is the best way that I can think of to explain this to you. 
I want you for a moment, just suspend, <laughs> suspend disbelief. And just for a moment, I want you to think about speaking with confidence and exuding confidence as dancing. So just imagine that to be confident means to memorize choreography for a dance and to get up and be in front of people and do the dance. And that equals confidence. Okay. Now I want to talk about gravity. And in order to talk about gravity and record this episode, I did some research on the solar system because I wanted to identify planets that had less gravity than Earth. So here's what I learned in that process. The first thing I learned is that the units for gravity is meter per second squared. I didn't know that. Did you know that? I definitely didn't know that. That's the first thing I learned. The second thing I learned is that Earth's gravity is 9.81. So Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared. And there actually aren't that many planets that have less gravity than Earth. A lot of them had like similar or more. One of them, I think it was Jupiter, had a lot, which <laughs> seemed like really scary. Like, can you imagine like being on a planet that's like really like intense gravity? That seems weird and scary. But anyway, for purposes of this episode, Mercury, the planet Mercury has 3.7 as its level of gravity. So Earth is 9.81, and I'll just, you know, say the number 9, and let's say Mercury is 3. And the moon is even less than that. The moon is 1.62. So if you use your imagination and think about like, okay, here's what it feels like to walk on Earth, and then you think about like walking on a planet like Mercury that has one third of the gravity on Earth, that's like lots less stability, right? Like that's going to feel really different. And then the moon is going to be even more like you're flying all around. There's only 1.62 compared to the Earth's gravitational pull of 9.81. And the reason that I want to share this with you is because it's going to help you understand why authenticity matters so much. So remember, if confidence means dancing, and what it means to be confident is to learn choreography and to perform it in front of people, I want you to think about what would happen if you learned your choreography and then you had to do that choreography on Mercury where you have one third the level of gravity that you have on Earth. It would be a lot harder for you to do the choreography because you wouldn't have anything anchoring you down. You'd be more floaty, right? And then imagine trying to do the choreography on the moon, which barely has any gravitational pull. And then it would be even harder because you're basically floating. You really have nothing anchoring you down. This is the same as authenticity and confidence. When you aren't being yourself, but you're trying to exude confidence, your confidence and strength has nothing to anchor into because you're not being you. Just like when you dance on the moon or on Mercury, you're kind of like floating around and you can't really do the moves in the same exact way. You can't get into a groove of really feeling confident when you're speaking in a voice that isn't yours or you're talking in a way that isn't you because you're just floating. You're not connected to anything. And this is, I think, what so many people miss. They get so focused, like when it comes to executive presence and some of the advice out there, there's so much focus on like how you quote unquote should sound, which I talked about in the episode right before this one. And there's so little focus on first anchoring into who you are. So the advice out there that's just like telling women, don't have uptick, don't talk this way, you know, make sure that you're being like louder or whatever, like all of that advice is basically like giving someone really detailed choreography and then asking them to dance on the moon. It's not going to work because there's no gravity. Sure, they can try to do it. You can try to kick your leg up in the air and try to do this dance move or that dance move, but it's not going to come out really good and it's not going to look like the dance and it's certainly not going to feel good. And this is what I often tell people 
when they are really concerned about things like filler words and things like a big one for me was Valley Girl and Uptick. I got so much feedback on this. And similar to what I see with people who think that they need to, you know, stop using filler words and who think that that's a problem is rather than focusing on feeling strong and confident and being themselves and being authentic and then letting their speech be what it is from that place, they focus on trying to change it, trying to change the filler words, trying to change the uptick. But that makes them more stress. That is more stress, more pressure, because they're thinking, oh my gosh, don't sound this way, don't do that, don't do that, and that feels awful. And so they're trying to speak and trying to change their speech while feeling awful, and that doesn't put them in a position to eliminate the filler words or whatever thing they're trying to eliminate, which I think is like not that important anyway, personally. But either way, even if you are trying to get rid of those things, it doesn't help them do that because they're so in their head, and it certainly doesn't bring confidence and power into their voice. It does the opposite because they're being more self-critical than usual. They're looking out for their own flaws, and they're really in their head and really in their analytical mind rather than being in the present, being in their body and their authenticity and in their strength and then flowing the speech from there. So it just takes them to the totally wrong place and they are trying to dance on the moon, but they have no gravity. That's why when people tell you don't use filler words or like don't do this or don't do that, it's like, like, d- did that really, ha- that's, does that help? No, that does not help because first of all, those things come from the unconscious. We don't control everything that we say, every way that we sound. We can certainly influence it over time, but it's not like someone can just point that out to you and you can change it. And in fact, then it makes you, it, it brings you farther away from your confidence, farther away from your authenticity, because all you're aware of is what's quote unquote wrong with how you're speaking, rather than being given the opportunity to explore what's right about how you already speak, where there is so much goodness and so much richness. Because when you are connected to who you are, you feel okay with who you are, you feel comfortable with who you are, you're dancing on earth, you have gravity, you can do the choreography, you can do all of the moves. And what begins to happen as you learn the choreography on earth with gravity while being authentic and being true to yourself, you begin to enjoy it, you begin to get into flow, you begin to get into the dance, you begin to have fun in a way that you can't when you're on the moon, when you're trying to dance with no gravity. But when you're on earth and you get in that flow and you start having fun and you really know the choreography, you exude confidence, you do the dance, and eventually you get to a point where not only can you do the whole choreography and can you do the dance and, you know, that means like showing up to the meeting and speaking with confidence and like not second guessing yourself and just being in flow. Not only do you get to that point with the dance on planet Earth when you have the gravity, but eventually you begin to feel so strong and powerful that as you're dancing, you're infusing yourself into the choreography. So it's like the difference between just doing the choreography versus like really being like in it and like doing a little extra butt shake or like, you know, like there's different ways to dance, right? Like you can dance mechanically Or you can like really let loose and like get into the music. And I've been watching a lot of World of Dance. J-Lo is like such a queen. I love her and I love that show. But if you watch World of Dance or any of the dance competition shows or any sort of dancing, you can see that the dancers are not just doing the moves. They're showing themselves. They're showing their personalities. They're exuding so much magnetic emotion and power. It's what draws you in. It just makes you want to watch them, right? And so when you get to a point where you're really comfortable It's just like you've learned that choreography. Now you're really getting into it and having so much fun. It's like that with your voice, too. You get to a point where you have gravity and you build this powerful voice off a foundation of authenticity. And then from that place, then you begin to add in more and more of you and your personalities and your quirks and all of the things that make your voice and you wonderful and beautiful and strong. And that's what distinguishes your style. And that's what you get known for as a leader. So it's not just about the confidence, but it's about the uniqueness that you bring. And that is so important if you want to lead, especially if you want to lead teams, if you want to lead people, if you want to lead companies. 
You need to magnetize people. And the best way you're going to magnetize people is not by being fake and not by being some version of yourself that you think you should be and not by eliminating filler words. Like whoever said, oh, I find that person so magnetic. They never use filler words. No, it's not about the filler words. We need to stop talking about all of those cosmetic things. There's no power there. It's not interesting. I don't care about it. It's boring, right? It comes from being you. It comes from learning to be yourself and learning to feel confident in yourself. And then from that place, showing more and more of who you are. As humans, one of the things we want most is just to see and witness other humans being real, being themselves, showing their personalities. It gives other people permission to be themselves. It gives other people permission to dance with more life and more vigor because no one is holding back. And that's really what confidence is about. And that's where authority comes from, too, because when you're being yourself, your full self with all of your authenticity, all of your confidence, that lands with people much more powerfully than when you're trying to exude a fake confidence or wear a mask. People will be drawn to you. They will want to be a part of what you are doing because we are attracted and we want to be around other real humans. It is such a simple thing, and yet it gets missed so often. And I get very fired up around this because it's like, When we focus on uptick and filler words and all this stuff, we're missing the gold. So it's like, to me, it's sort of like we're all on a treasure hunt and there's this like massive pile of treasure that is out there for the taking. And instead of like going to this glowing, glorious treasure, we like found this pile of pennies and we're like counting the pennies. Like to me, that's what focusing on filler words is. It's like your power comes from you. It comes from your heart. It comes from your soul. It comes from who you are as a human. And that is so much deeper and so much more profound than these artificial things that are in our voices. And it's not to say that you're bad or wrong if you want to get rid of those things. It's everyone's personal choice, right? I've chosen over time to let my, like all of my vocal tics and the ones that are not considered like quote unquote good, my personal choice over time has been to bring those back into my voice. So I, throughout my career, I got so much feedback on my Valley Girl voice and my uptick Not as much on fillers, but really like the uptick piece for me, although I use the word like and I love it. I think it's so fun. I'm from Southern California. Okay, I like it. But I actually have been slowly reintroducing, slowly titrating that back into my voice because it's who I am. It's how I feel alive. It's how I feel myself. I I'm a woman. I grew up in sunny Los Angeles. And sometimes I talk like a valley girl. And sometimes when I'm talking like a valley girl, that's when I feel most alive. And it's been a really long journey for me to get there. And there's no right way to do this, right? Like you can eliminate whatever you want from your voice. You can keep what you want in your voice. It's totally up to you. But those aren't the things that really matter. What really matters is you building comfort in being yourself and then from that place projecting confidence and then from that place learning to be even more yourself and have fun on top of that. And these are things that I really brought into my own life in a very deep way when I started to do theater. And I'm going to do another episode coming up just on some of the links between expression and comfort in theater and expression and comfort on stage and what I can teach you from my experiences that you can bring into meetings, that you can bring into your job because there is some powerful stuff there. But it really isn't. It is not about these superficial things. And if you have any of those like vocal things like the, you know, like the filler words or the uptick or whatever, I don't think it's a problem. Your environment might think it's a problem, but I don't think it's a problem. And that brings me to the next thing that I want to share with you about authenticity and about the gravitational pull of Earth and being able to do choreography on Earth, which is that authenticity and the ability to be yourself and the ability to be authentic is a two-way street. 
There's your half and there's your environment's half. And you are only responsible for your half. And if your environment isn't doing its part to create safety for you to be yourself and for you to be authentic, then it's going to be a lot harder for you to learn to be authentic. Here's how I want you to think about this. Going back to the idea of planet Earth and how gravity is like authenticity. So if you have gravity, you can do the dance and you can learn the choreography. I want you to imagine you're on planet Earth, you're being authentic, you're doing the choreography, you're exuding confidence. But then the people in the audience who are watching you, you look at them while you're doing your dance routine and you notice that they are starting to look at you and they're pointing and they're whispering and you see someone laughing. And as you're doing this dance, you're noticing the audience appears to be judging you. You're seeing that happening. And all of a sudden, you're going to start to feel differently. You're not going to feel as safe to do that dance. And you might struggle to get through the rest of the choreography once you're aware of that happening. And not only will you struggle, but like you definitely won't do what I talked about earlier, where you're really being yourself and like you're bringing all your extra flair and you're like shaking your booty extra. You definitely will stop doing all of that as soon as you notice that the audience is like being really judgy about you and you might even struggle just to get through the basic choreography and it's the same with safety if you are in a work environment where you are being judged where people around you have indicated either through words or actions or things that happen in the culture around you they have indicated that it is not safe for you to be your authentic self that that is considered bad that we all talk this way that we do it this way or that you've gotten feedback that you need to change how you talk change how you speak then that means that the environment even though you're trying to be authentic, you're trying to dance with gravity on planet Earth, the environment isn't giving you the support you need to feel safe dancing. And it's going to be really hard to dance and especially hard then to dance with that flair and that magic that makes you feel so happy and alive. And this is really something to think about. This applies to this situation and this applies to any struggle that you're having professionally, imposter syndrome, confidence, all of the things. The things that you are struggling with and the things that you're dealing with internally, your ability to grow is always going to be impacted by the environment around you. And the more safe and the more supportive the environment around you is, the easier it will be for you to grow and the easier it will be for you to build confidence and it will be for you to work through the things that are hard for you. And this is really important because while you can't control the environment around you, You can control where you work and you can control where you trade your brilliance and your time for the paycheck. That is your choice. And when you choose to work somewhere, you're entering into that environment. And I'm not saying like, I'm not blaming you at all. And I don't want this to sound that way at all. And I know for so many people, it's actually impossible to find a totally safe environment. Like that doesn't exist for everyone. And that's so messed up. And that's so sad. But I want to empower you when you think about your career and when you think about where you want to work and when you think about all these things, I want to empower you to choose environments, to choose bosses, to choose teams that support you. So often when you don't feel confident, you approach finding a role like, you know, someone's doing you a really big favor by hiring you. No, you are doing the organization a really big favor. So make sure that they are giving you what you need. And this is really important because the more people have this high standard of I want to work in a place that lets me be myself and doesn't tell me how I need to speak and how I need to act, just lets me be myself and do amazing work. The more people take that approach, the more that organizations who have unhealthy cultures are going to bleed talent and that talent's going to go elsewhere and it's going to force change to happen faster. And I know this is like more of a bigger picture macro thing, but I just want to draw your awareness to the fact that the burden isn't 100% on you to build confidence. The burden is on your environment. The burden is on your manager. I really can't stand it when managers and leaders give feedback without giving the equivalent support. 
if feedback is given to someone, it's like you give them feedback and then you say, and let me help you. Let's be a team. Let's work together. That's how you manage. That's how you lead. And so often people get the feedback without the support, without that clear indication of I am here for you. I am on your side. I am on your team. And I just want you to know that that's possible. That exists out in the world and you deserve that. You deserve to have that support. And when you do have it, it's going to help you be authentic and be confident and find your voice faster. Now, that's not to say that you can't find confidence and find your voice and feel powerful when you don't have all of that support. You can, but it's harder. If you're going to get up and do a dance in front of people and those people might be pointing and whispering, you need to have a ton, a ton of strength and feeling solid in yourself to make it through that dance. And that's something I want you to be aware of in your struggle because I want you to be aware of what is driven by you and what is driven by the environment because so often, especially with women, we tend to blame ourselves for everything, think everything is our fault. But my strong, strong, strong belief about finding your voice, about confidence, about performance, about performing in your job is it's half you, half your employer. And there are so many environments out there that act like it's all your responsibility And I think that is such like a myopic, short-sighted, unhelpful, value-destroying way of thinking. It is a 50-50 deal. And if you don't have that support, then find the support that you need. When you feel supported, when you feel safe, it changes everything. It makes growth so much easier. That's part of the reason why I do what I do. It's not just that I help someone with like the actual skills and I tell them what to do. It's that you gain support and safety through other people, through relationships. And if you're not gaining that through your environment, you can go outsource that and find that somewhere else so that you have that support that you need to feel safe to dance, to take the risk to dance, right? That's what it's all about. And so that brings me to the end. And to give you one takeaway or one thing that you can take with you, I just want you to notice, are you being yourself? And see what it feels like to just be not 100% more yourself, but how does it feel when you're 5%, 10% more you when you're speaking? Is it easier to speak? Is it harder to speak? Just notice, because the more you can experiment and the more you can find comfort in turning up that dial, the easier it is going to become for you to build confidence. All right, that brings me to the end. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you're doing amazing. Don't forget to go into the show notes if you want to get my free three-day video course on executive presence. I just realized that I didn't tell you what it's called because I was so excited about it when I talked about it in the intro that I forgot to share the name. The course is called Speak Like a CEO, and it is literally designed to help you speak like a CEO. In my career, I have been very, very privileged to be in the room a lot with C-level executives and really, really privileged to have most of what I make be for C-level executives or for boards of directors. And so I have really learned what it is they need, what they're looking for in a room, and how you can speak in a way that captivates them. And if you're not speaking to that level, that's fine. Start learning that now so you feel like so rock solid and awesome in how you speak. You know what I mean? Like get yourself to that level, train for that level. It's like train for the Olympics And then like the local race is going to seem like the easiest thing ever. That's the level that I want to help you with. That's the level of excellence that I want you to get to in your communication and in how you feel about your voice and your communication. So you can grab the free course in the show notes below. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. It is such a joy to share this with you. It is a pleasure and a privilege to be, for some of you, in your ears. (laughs) I don't take that lightly, that I'm inside your ears. It's a great place to be, and I'm thankful for it. That sounds a little weird, but that means it's time to end the episode. As soon as I say like a really strange, weird, creepy thing, that's when I have like the little ding go off that like, all right, my brain's tired. It's done talking. It's time to go. So I'm going to sign off. I love you so much. Sending you all my love. Check out the show notes for everything you need. Have an amazing week. Try to be a bit more authentic. Try to dance with gravity. And I will catch you 
next week. Bye!